Shanley Pump and Equipment. SEP Series Progressive Cavity Pumps. Instructions for Pump Disassembly. This is an instructional disassembly video for the SEP series of progressing cavity pumps. Before starting the disassembly of your pump, we recommend that you contact a Shanley Pump representative if you have any questions. If the pump has been in service, we recommend that you have flushed and drained the pump of all pump mediums and have a sturdy workbench on which to work. tools required for disassembly, a wrench set, a soft hammer, snap ring pliers, a strap wrench, a spanner wrench, a file, flathead screwdriver, a chisel, a punch and hammer, an adjustable wrench, a vise mounted to a table or stand, and an armor press or hydraulic press. Discharge case and stator removal. Begin by securing the pump to the workbench. Using a wrench, remove the four nuts from the tie rods at the discharge case. Tap the discharge case from the tie rods and stator with a soft hammer. You can remove all four tie rods easily with the help of two of the tie rod nuts. Before removing the stator, fix the rotor in place with an adjustable wrench and rack. Be careful not to damage the shaft or shaft key. With the shaft locked in place, remove the stator by turning it counterclockwise with a strap wrench and pulling at the same time. Continue to turn the stator until it is completely removed with the rotor fully exposed. After the stator is removed, inspect it internally for wear and damage. Suction casing removal. Place a support under the suction casing. To remove the suction case, the four nuts, lock washers, and bolts must be removed.
remove the suction casing. Pivot joint disassembly. Remove the gasket. During installation, the clamp band is secured by bending it over the clamp. Reverse this by bending the band back over the buckle. The bend should be flat as shown. Tap the buckle with a chisel and hammer to loosen it. If preferred, you can remove the buckle with a saw. Repeat this for all four clamp bands. To remove the cover sleeves, you can either pry them over the joint to the center of the coupling rod to be removed later, or cut the cover sleeve in half. Rotor and coupling rod removal. A small punch mark holds the retaining sleeve in position. Carefully file the punch mark from the retaining sleeve and rotor head. To remove the retaining sleeve, the coupling rod and rotor must be squarely aligned. You may need to use a support to aid in holding the rotor and coupling rod at the proper elevation to mate each part square. Once square, the retaining sleeve can be removed. The sleeve should slide off by hand, but if not, tap the retaining sleeve with a chisel and hammer. Tap the coupling rod pin out of the rotor head with a flat punch and hammer. The guide bushings help hold the coupling rod in position and have to be displaced to remove the coupling rod. Use a punch to tap the guide bushing out of the rotor head. You can then remove the rotor, which will typically be filled with grease from the pivot joint cavity. Remove the second retaining sleeve in the same manner as the first, by first filing away the punch mark between the retaining sleeve and the drive shaft head. Remove the second retaining sleeve in the same manner as the first. Remove the second coupling pin. Remove the guide bushings from the drive shaft in the same manner as before. Remove the coupling rod from the drive shaft. Again, this is typically filled with grease from the pivot joint cavity. Inspect the connecting rod bushings for wear. If worn, remove and replace the bushings. Bearing house disassembly. Locate the flinger ring in the bearing housing. Carefully pry back the edge of the flinger ring with a flathead screwdriver and pull it towards the shaft seal. Locate the snap ring holes inside the bearing housing. Using a pair of snap ring pliers, remove the snap ring from the bearing housing and move it up against the flinger ring. The drive shaft assembly will need to be removed from the bearing housing with a press.
position the bearing housing in the press so the seal housing is not impeded as it is pressed out. After removing the rotating assembly from the bearing housing, secure the assembly in a vise in the vertical position shown. Place a solid shaft through the hole in the head of the drive shaft to keep it from turning while in the vise. Remove the key from the shaft, being careful not to damage the shaft or key. Next, you will be removing the bearing nut. First, locate the tab on the washer that has been bent into the bearing nut slot. Using a flat punch, bend the tab down until it clears the bearing nut. Now, use a spanner wrench to remove the bearing nut. Once loose, the bearing nut can be removed by hand. Next, remove the tab washer, followed by the two spacer rings. The bearings will be removed from the shaft with a press. Center the drive shaft assembly is shown, pressing the inner race of the axial bearings to remove both bearings. Slowly press the drive shaft until it falls. Remove the grease shield, top bearing, and shaft sleeve before pressing further. Continue to press the drive shaft until the second bearing is removed. Put the remaining drive shaft assembly on a workbench. Remove the spacer, followed by the shaft sleeve, bearing cover, snap ring, and flinger ring. Now remove the stuffing box housing and packing, or seal housing and mechanical seal, depending on which is fitted. Remove the shaft wear sleeve. Remove the O-ring under the shaft wear sleeve on the drive shaft. Inspect both the lip seal in the center and the O-ring around the outside of the bearing cover for wear and replace if required. Your SCP series progressing cavity pump is now completely disassembled. If you have any questions about or require spare parts for the repair of your SCP progressive cavity pump, please feel free to contact us at www.shanleypump.com. We always have complete pumps and all spare parts in our inventory ready to ship the same day.